Hi there, and welcome to the April edition of Simply Scuba Live. In this broadcast, I'm going to be chatting about all of the latest news and products that have happened in, uh, in April. I'm going to do a quick sort of uh, Regulator 101, just about how they work and, uh, and how to look after, or what's best to look after your regulators. <coughs> Hi guys, I'm Mark, I'll be your host for today. Um, and yeah, I'm going to be asking any of your questions. Uh, so if you've got anything you want to know, um, just give me a shout and um, just put it in the comments below or tweet it with hashtag Simply Scuba Live. Uh, put it on our Facebook page or, uh, or any kind of social media and, uh, and I'll try and answer it live on the show. If I can't answer it live, I'll, um, uh, I'll either do a video or, um, or I'll put it at the beginning of the next show, next month's show. So first of all, we're going to have a look at the news. <coughs> Pardon me. So for April news. So a few things have happened in, uh, in April. It's, um, it's really the start of the season. The weather starts to, uh, to brighten up. The water starts to get a bit warmer. So everyone starts to dig out all their dive kits. And this is the time of year when all the manufacturers start to bring out their new equipment, um, new sort of um, new package deals, and uh, and we ourselves at Simply School, we start to put some package deals together ourselves. So the first bit of news, uh, this is quite exciting. I've been watching this for a little while. This is um, the Blue Abyss, and um, any of you have been uh, diving for any uh, sort of length of time, you'll have heard of Nemo Thirty Three in Brussels uh, for um, for the best part. Uh, of a few years now, they've been one of the sort of, um, sort of inland dive pools uh, that people visit from all over the um, sort of Europe. Uh, they come from the States as well. I've been there a few times myself. It's, a, uh, it's an inland uh, pool in Brussels. It's all fresh water and it's a 33 meter deep swimming pool. So um, that's, that's a great attraction. Uh, I've been having a chat and what looking with uh, with Blue Abyss and what they're doing is they're designing and um, and they're planning to build a 50 meter deep huge indoor swimming pool in Essex just north of London. Now if we have a look at the um, <coughs> pardon me if we have a look at the uh, sort of top down view which are these squares here this is uh, you compare it to Nemo 33 and it's massive. Nemo 33, anybody who's actually visited it, when you get to the top section and actually look at the top, it's a pretty big swimming pool, let alone just the, um, the depth, the actual square footage of it is massive. But when you compare it to what they're planning for Blue Abyss, Blue Abyss is just massive. This is going to knock it out of the park. And because it's going to be in the UK, this is really going to boost our, um, our diving scene. So um, the real interesting part about this is that they, they're trying to make it as inclusive as possible. This is going to be for recreational scuba divers, for technical scuba divers, uh, even commercial free diving. They're uh, they're actually in talks with the European uh, uh, Space uh, Space um, Society. I want to say I can't remember the word, but um, but we're going to have actual astronaut training in this pool. And, um, and right now they're looking to have a crane, which you can see in this uh, artist's representation, which is going to be lowering. Uh, wrecks and um, and eventually like um, sort of underwater space stations that the astronauts are going to train on but then the recreational scuba divers are going to be able to look around uh, so that's really really exciting they're um, they're aiming to have this open to the public everything's going to be state-of-the-art they're going to have their own um, multimedia classrooms and uh, this is just going to be a wonderful, wonderful place, and it's really going to boost the scuba industry in the UK. Uh, they're looking to uh, to open it sort of June, July 2016, so it's really not that far away. Uh, but what they do need is um, is a few extra votes um, just for um, some added funding. So we've got a link down here at the bottom of the page, and there'll also be a link in our description. Uh, it only takes about two minutes just log on to, uh, to Virgin Media's Pitch to Rich site and, uh, and if you could just vote for them that would be really really good um, just to try and boost and make this happen because it's a really really exciting idea um, <clears throat> just for so many reasons. We want to get um, a Blue Abyss talking with, uh, with John, he's really interested in getting younger divers into the water and get them diving. 
The real benefit of this is that um, the British diving season really sort of wakes up around April time and then just kind of plateaus off and drops off around the October time. It's very weather dependent. With this, it's going to be an indoor um, freshwater dive site and they're going to be able to control the, um, the climate inside that water. So it'll be... Um, It'll be completely um, sort of open all year rounds. It, uh, it won't be seasonal at all. So, uh, so this is really, really exciting. I'm really excited to see what, uh, what comes of this. Uh, the next piece of news is um, the Charm Entry Visa. It, um, I put there gone, question mark, because um, they still haven't quite made their minds up. But um, Charm El Sheikh is really the sort of mecca for, uh, for us in the UK. It's... Um, it's one of the main tourist um, sites. If, you've, um, if you're a British scuba diver, chances are you've been to Sham. Um, everybody that I know that dives has been to Sham. It's, uh, it's so easy and convenient. And what you know is um, you get off the airplane, you get on the little bus, you walk into the um, into Sharm El Sheikh Airport, and the first thing you need to do is get one of these little blue um, visa stamps, and you need to get it stamped when you uh, when you enter and when you exit the country. Now, what the um, the Egyptian, um, uh, what you call it, the um, immigration office are thinking of doing is stopping that. So you'll have to pre-apply for a visa, but only if you're traveling by yourself. If you've uh, if you've organised a trip through a travel agent, it, business as usual. You turn up, you get the visa, and it's all fine. But if you're just travelling by yourself, you've just planned it all by yourself. You're going to have to pre uh, pre-arranged so you're going to have to uh, visit the um, the immigration office in the uh, in London and you're going to have to pay for the visa and get it all sorted there and hand over your passport photos and all that kind of stuff um, but they still haven't quite made their minds up yet um, the real decision date they've said is going to be May 15th um, so just keep an eye on that have a look on um, TripAdvisor and whatnot just to um, just to see whether you need to um, uh, to buy a visa ahead of time, or uh, or whether you can still just turn up and uh, and buy one at the gate. Uh, the next thing is uh, this weekend, this bank holiday weekend, is the Cornwall Scuba Fest. Uh, this is where quite a few brands, British bands and uh, British divers, they um, they come just to celebrate British diving. So they'll be bringing all of their equipments. They've um, they've got different stands where you can look at all the different uh, new equipments, and uh, and even they've got ribs. They take people on tri dives. You can either go for a dive on a rebreather if you want. And um, so if um, if you're free this weekend, it's open Saturday, Sunday, and Bank Holiday Monday. Uh, it's just really good way to celebrate the British diving industry, and uh, and just get some diving in. Cornwall's a really nice place to go diving as well. Nice water, and um, and lots of things to see. <clears throat> uh, another piece of news is uh, is Raid has joined CETA. Uh, Raid is a new training agency. They're um, they're up and coming. They're they've been around for a little while, but they're really starting to push now. Uh, I've been talking with their uh, their director of training, Paul, and uh, and it's a really exciting, more digital um, sort of upgraded training agency. Everything from your beginner courses all the way up to rebreather and tech. Um, and CETA is the uh, the scuba industries, um, <coughs> uh, oh, I forget what it stands for now, I just know it as CETA. Um, it's the real, uh, the agency that you need to be uh, a member of just to um, just to start to trade and, uh, and train people in the UK. And um, so there's a really big leap for them. Um, you're seeing them more and more. They're gonna be at Scuba Fest as well. And um, yeah, I'm keeping an eye on these guys. Okay, now onto some uh, sort of Simply Scuba news. Um, <clears throat> our new app is going really well. Uh, so if you haven't downloaded it yet, just download it, it's free. Uh, what it basically does is it takes all the information from our website and just puts it onto a mobile platform. So you can watch all of my videos, you can look at all of the, um, the images. Now Simply Scuba, we only ever use our images. Um, <clears throat> If something's brand spanking new that we haven't had it yet, um, our, uh, our photographer hasn't had a chance to take a picture of it yet, we will use the manufacturer's image. But as soon as we have it in stock, we get it pictured so you know exactly what you're getting. Um, we're very proud of that. And the app 
is just a really nice place to uh, to put it, and uh, and you can really just um, sort of look at all of our website, all of our new, uh, latest deals as well. If you click on the top left hand icon, you click on uh, just arrived. It's all of our newest products, and if we're ever um, doing any kind of promotions, you can see on the first screen here uh, we've got Scuba Pro Evo regulators. Um, that will be up to date with the newest um, banners, which is the newest sort of deals that are coming out from Simply Scuba. So yeah, as I said earlier, if you haven't downloaded it yet, <clears throat> have a look, uh, download it, it's free, it doesn't take up any space on your phone, and uh, it's just a really nice way to, um, to check out equipment. Another piece of news, this is, um, we are, we understand that it's it's not the easiest to buy stuff online, so we want to make it as easy as possible for you and as risk-free as possible. So what we've introduced is on any orders in the UK over £25, we're going to give you free delivery and free returns. So if you want to buy two wetsuits because you're unsure which size you want, we'll send them both out to you and you can send the one that doesn't fit back. Or if you just buy one wetsuit, you try it on, it doesn't quite fit, you can send it back for free and we'll send you back um, your relevant size. So, uh, so it's really risk-free and, uh, and we never take payment until we've actually dispatched the item. We, um, we really want to make it as, uh, as enjoyable an experience as possible. Uh, we want to make it as nice as possible and um, just make it as stress-free as possible. So, uh, so yeah, all deliveries and returns are free. Um, on orders over 25 pounds, which is quite a lot of deliveries. <clears throat> the other bit of news I mentioned last month, we're, uh, we're still looking at scuba t-shirts. Thanks for all the feedback. Um, most people are just saying, oh, make them all. Uh, we're still trying to decide which colors you like. Uh, the most popular tends to be the dive, dive, dive t-shirt. Uh, we've made a little um, change to it. We've moved the, um, the logo in the middle. Uh, we just kind of rearranged that. And, um, and we're just after colors from you guys. Any, um, any, uh, any views, if you, uh, if you prefer the blue, let us know. If you prefer the gray, let us know. Um, we really just, we want your opinions because um, we, uh, <clears throat> we're only looking at making sort of one, maybe two of these designs. Um, if, if there's a real lot of um, backing and you really do want them all, we will make them all, but, um, but we just want to know. We just want your feedback uh, as much as possible. <clears throat> okay, we've uh, we've put some new packages together. Uh, the beginning of the year, we put um, we put together three packaging um, sort of categories, just so that you can get BCD regs um, all in one package. Because if you're buying your regulators, you might as well get your BCD as well. And uh, and we catered the three different tiers on whether you're like a British diver or whether you're a travel diver. Because those have sold really well, we've, uh, we've expanded the range. We've now added ladies packages, which includes either the new Oceanic uh, Ladies Hera, which is, um, which is fairly new. It came out this, uh, this season, about a month or two ago, and, uh, and it's fully adjustable. The shoulder straps, they have a very, very clever um, sliding rail system. If you have a look at my, uh, my video on the product page for this, you can see how you can adjust the shoulder strap. You can adjust the chest strap as well. It's all really nicely padded, and uh, it's really designed specifically for women, so it's more comfortable. Uh, and it's coming with Oceanic regulators. So the, both the BCDs and the regulators are coming with Oceanic's lifetime warranty. So as long as you register them um, on the bottom of every uh, product that comes with the Oceanic warranty, we've added a little link so you click on that, and that describes how to uh, to register for the warranty. As long as you have your regulator service once a year by a Oceanic Service Centre, you will never pay for the service kits. The only thing you'll ever pay for is the um, is the labour charge. So every year you're saving about forty pounds worth of um, of service kits. So it's really worthwhile. And um, and if anything covered by the warranty fails, then um, Oceanic normally um, just repair or replace it. So it's a really good uh, comprehensive warranty. It, it makes buying Oceanic and um, Oceanic equipment uh, really worthwhile. Two other um, package categories. We come up with the, uh, the HD200, which is the Hollis uh, sort of backwing 
it's uh, it's uh, it's, sort of, it's a hybrid between a BCD and a real like technical wing system. This is your transitional BCD. If you're thinking about moving into tech, this uh, this is a very nice crossover. It's nice and comfortable. It's got nice and features, but you can still use it towards technical diving. Uh, we've paired these with Hollis regulators, either the uh, the two one two with the DC one regulator, or the uh, the newer 500 SE, the uh, the pneumatically balanced side exhaust um, uh, second stage, which I really, really like. Um, and then we've come up with the travel um, side of things, which comes with the, uh, the Hollis LTS, or light travel system. This is a real nice stripped down regulator. It's a flexible back plate. Not, it's not a regulator, sorry, it's a BCD, uh, with a, a fully flexible back plate. And uh, it's just made out of really nice tough material integrated weights, everything you need. And uh, again, Hollis is, um, is under the same umbrella company as, uh, as Oceanic. So Hollis equipment, the BCDs and the regulators, they still come with Oceanic's lifetime warranty. Uh, you register them in the exact same way, so, um, so you still get your service kits free and um, all you ever pay for is your labor whenever you get them serviced every year. So these are uh, nice packages that we brought out. We've also brought out some uh, oceanic packages. Now these two, uh, if I start on the left, we have the, uh, the oceanic Zeo regulator. Now this again is a, a pneumatically balanced uh, second stage. It comes with the new uh, FTXI inline first stage, which is really, really lightweight. And uh, the A-clamp version has a very clever uh, A-clamp adjustment so it makes it nice and compact uh, it's great for British diving it's great for traveling abroad it's full of features uh, it's really really nice and it comes with that oceanic lifetime warranty so again servicing is darn cheap on the right hand side we have the Omega 3 this is the upgrade version of the Omega 2 that was so popular um, oceanic were just hounded by uh, by customers constantly uh, asking about the Omega 3 um, on myself, I had uh, Omega 2s uh, when I used to teach. They are so useful. Side exhaust regulators, doesn't matter which way up you have them, no matter which way you donate them, uh, they're always the right way up. The bubbles come off to one side of your face, so, uh, so they never go in front of your, um, your mouth. They don't interrupt the view. The, um, the purge button and the, the diaphragm are rear-facing. So if you're swimming into a strong current, it doesn't affect the regulator. They are, uh, they are just outstanding. One little change that Oceanic have made, they, um, the Omega at the base of the regulator, they did have a, uh, a pre-dive, like a Venturi switch. Uh, they've removed that. They had a couple issues with it. So um, it was just making a bit of noise whilst people were diving, and it was just annoying some people. So they just removed it. Um, hasn't affected the performance, but it, uh, it stopped that, um, that awkward sound. Uh, Really, really nice regulators. They both come with the uh, the Alpha 9 second stage. Very nice second stage, lightweight, does everything you need. No bells or whistles, but it's an octo, you don't need bells and whistles. Um, and it either comes with the Oceanic Navcon triple gauge or the double combi. Uh, again, both really nice gauges, um, nice big dials, nice easy to read, and um, the depth gauge is, um, is graduated so as you're coming up to do your safety stop it's a lot more accurate at uh, at shallower depths great packages um have a look at them we've done them for a decent price and um yeah have a look at those they're really nice regulators to um, to start off with or um or professional divers uh keeping on with oceanic the um as of tomorrow we're, uh, we're going to be offering a free transmitter with, uh, with every OCI dive computer bought. And, uh, and we've also introduced, or Oceanic have introduced, a, um, a new blackout version, which is a matte black. And this is really cool. Oh, I like this version. It's, um, it's definitely a sort of boy's wrist com uh, computer. This um, does everything you need. It's got wireless air transmission, so you can uh, connect it to your first stage tells you exactly how much air is in your cylinder and um, does everything you need. Oceanic computers, they always um, come with 
Oceanic's dual algorithms as well, which is a really good selling point that most people don't know about. How it works is um, you have two different algorithms. So um, I wrote a blog on it earlier on in the month, so you can have a look for that. But, um, but Oceanic computers, you can have it set to um, like DSAT, which is one algorithm. And this is what you learnt on in your uh, like paddy dive table as a DSAT. But if your buddy is using, say, a Cinto dive computer, they're on an RGBM algorithm. So what you can do is you can change the algorithm on your Oceanic computer to match your buddy. That way, there's going to be less inconsistencies. You're going to be able to have the same dive profile dive together without any issues. And that's a really big selling point. Um, and then you can just switch back to, um, to whichever one that you prefer. Nice little rich, uh, wrist dive computer, nice and tidy, very um, comprehensive um, user interface, which makes, makes life very much easier. You look at some computers, they've only got like one button. There's only so many ways you can push one button, whereas the, uh, the OCI has four buttons. So you can go into a menu, you can come back out of it, you can go backwards and forwards, and you can select. So uh, just very, very um, easy user interface. Interva, who, uh, who visited us a couple months ago, they've, um, on their two uh, sort of underwater action cameras, the Edge X and the Nova HD, uh, for the month of May, they've, uh, they've added a lot of um, freebie extras. So whenever you buy the Interva Edge X dive camera, you're going to get a, a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. You're going to get a, um, a free mask mount, so you can attach it to any framed mask. And, uh, and you're going to get a, a green neoprene mask, um, camera bag as well, just to keep it safe in your bag. So you're going to get all of those free just when you buy the camera. The links are going to be uh, live in the description below in a second. And you've also, on the Nova HD, which is the EdgeX's uh, sort of little brother, this is the upgrade of the SP1, you're going to get a, um, a floating multi-grip. You get a 16 gigabyte micro SD card. You're going to get a kit of um, personalized color rings. So around the, um, <clears throat> around the front lens, instead of just the standard black, you can just unscrew that and screw on one of the four colors. And you're also going to get another one of your, um, one of these neoprene uh, camera bags just to keep it safe. So instead of just buying the camera and then you've got to buy the memory cards and then if you want, you have to buy the mount. Uh, with these two cameras, uh, for a limited time, they're going to be coming free. So, um, so have a look at those. It's really good. The quality that's coming out, it's, uh, it's 1080p. They've got stunning uh, battery life, really good quality uh, dive cameras. So, um, so have a look at those. Sunto have uh, had a free transmitter offer on their Hilo 2 and Viper Air uh, dive computers. That's been running for, uh, for a few weeks now. Uh, that's had a lot of interest. Uh, we're going to extend it for, um, for a limited time. And um, these are really nice um, wrist top um, dive computers. Uh, the Hilo 2 is more your technical gas mixing dive computer. Uh, the Viper Air is more the recreational version, but they're both wirelessly uh, integrated and uh, they're really nice user-friendly um, dive computers. I myself, I use a Hilo 2. Um, <clears throat> they're really nice. Have a look at them. You're getting a free um, £250 wireless um, air transmitter, so have a look at that offer. All of these links uh, to the products are going to be in the description below. Um, so just click on those, and that will take you straight to uh, straight to the products. Onto Scuba Pro, Scuba Pro on their A700, S600, and G260 regulators, they are offering a free R195 Octo. So uh, so this is Scuba Pro's like highest Octo. And um, for any of the Scuba Pro regulators on our website, except for the Mark II R195, uh, everything else, you're going to get a free R195 Octo. Uh, the thing you have to remember is that um, you have to scroll down to the, uh, to the product pairing and actually um, click on the product pairing. Otherwise, on our system, all it says is that you've, uh, you, you want the first and second stage. You don't want the Octo. Um, 
before we send it out, customer services, they have a look at the order and go, oh, I wonder if he wants a free Octo. They'll give you a phone call or they'll pop you an email um, just to make sure. And, um, and if you want, we're, uh, we're now offering a system where we assemble your regulators and we test them and we give you a, um, a regulator service logbook as well. So, um, so that's a good service from us. I'm going to go into regulator uh, assembly and servicing in a little bit. Scoob Pro also more offers. They um, with the EverDry Four Dry Suit, they're giving you a free Climosphere undersuit. So um, so that way you're ready to rock and roll. The uh, the EverDry is Scuba Pro's neoprene dry suit. It's really really popular. It's great for British diving and the Climosphere. You get a free ninety five pound undersuit. So um, that's a really good offer. We're going to extend that. Uh, I know it says on the website that it's, uh, it runs out tomorrow, but we're going to extend that uh, for a limited time as well. So um, it, we're still going to honor that, uh, that three undersuit for a little while. Uh, new ranges. We have uh, a new range of Dive Sangha clothing. This is, um, this is from a, a British couple. They're, um, uh, they've, they've designed a new range of clothing, and it's, it's really nice, high-quality material. Um, nice sort of smart designs they're not too outrageous and um, and they've come out with a very unique hung dry system now if anyone's been on a liverboard or lived on a boat um, you'll know that dry, uh, drying off your equipment after it's got wet can be a bit hazardous because you go to the railing and you peg it on and uh, if it gets breezy the pegs can give and the clothes just fly away whereas the hung dry system if you have a look at the bottom along the hems of, uh, of all their tops, and it will be along the waistband of their bottoms. Um, you've got a little button and a, um, a loop system. So you don't need any pegs to hang it up, and uh, it's really, really secure, and the, um, the materials are quite fast drying as well. So have a look at them. Very nice, um, smart designs. Uh, the Apex RK3 fin are a nice, short, tough little dive fin. Um, we're struggling to keep stock of these because they're really, really popular. Uh, again, similar to the uh, to the Apex Lifeline spools, they have been so popular. Apex are uh, struggling to keep up with demand just because they are very, very effective products. Uh, watch my video in the product description. The link's down below. Nice, tough little dive fin, and uh, they're suitable for uh, for any level of diver. Along with Apex, the, uh, the Tech Shorts are still finally new. They arrived a few weeks ago. Uh, these are a great uh, little product. You can wear them by themselves. You can wear them over your wetsuit just to add thigh pockets for that added storage. And they also add an extra bit of thermal protection as well. Apex, uh, we've also the Tech 3 regulators. They came out quite a while ago, um, but we've just started stocking them. These are for your twin sets. You uh, In the kit, you get two um, uh, sort of trying to think of the word, um, two first stages that are mirror images of themselves. They are designed specifically for first stages, so you can route your hoses down out of the way so they're nice and safe, and um, the hose routing is designed specifically for second stages. So these are really nice, and they come with Apex XGX 50 second stages. Hollis have, uh, have released their convertible spool. So this is a nice, uh, lightweight, small um, sort of hybrid spool. It's between a spool and a reel. It's nice and small and compact like a reel, but it has the features of a full, um, a full reel. So, um, so these are really nice. If you prefer spools, then you've got you can remove all of the um, uh, what you call it, the uh, the handle system and the locking system, and just use the bolt snap. Or if you want something more tactile, you want that real system, you can use the handle and the um, this white knob on the uh, on the side. You can screw that in, and that acts as a locking mechanism. Hollis have also brought out a, uh, a really nice uh, embroidered hoodie, and this is really high quality. Uh, it's not just ironed on graphics. These are actually sewn in to the material. Really nice. Everybody loves that uh, that Hollis logo, that red H. Uh, you see it everywhere. It's really nice. You can wear this around the dive site um, or any time, really, just to keep you warm, keep you dry. Uh, it's a really nice little hoodie. Cressy Newton Dive Computer. This is another 
uh, wrist mounted dive computer. You can wear it as a watch size. A really nice part of this dive computer is that it has a, um, an off fu function. So, um, so with a lot of sort of wrist size dive computers, they, they're just constantly on because they assume that people are going to wear them day to day, wear them every day, and it's, uh, it just tells the time is normal. Chris, you understand that a lot of people, they don't wear their wrist size dive computers all the time. So to save battery life, what they do is if you hold down the mode button, I believe, I haven't had a lot of time to play with this, but if you hold down the mode button for five seconds, it goes into a sleep mode. It still records the time and everything you need, um, but it doesn't waste too much battery. Mares have brought out the new range of RZ torches. These have come out uh, a couple of weeks ago. These are, uh, these are rechargeable zoom functioning torches. So, uh, so you get the small little backup dive light, the, uh, the two RZs, and you work your way up to the really big, powerful primary 12 RZ with 1200 lumens of power. And you can change it on the dive between a nice wide angle beam or a really um, tight spotlight beam. Very, very nice aluminium dive torch, nice and light, nice and strong. And IST have, uh, have released a new gauge mask. If, uh, if any of you remember the MAG-4, this is, uh, this is the same deal. It's a twin lens framed mask, but the bottom quarter is an angled plus 1.75 prescription. So to save yourself a lot of money getting your own prescription put into the, um, into the mask, IST have already put in plus 1.75 to help you read your gauges and your computer that much easier. Uh, that's a really nice product. Um, it makes, if you've got a um, fairly reasonable prescription, you can just read your, uh, your gauges nice. Um, that's a really nice, um, really nice mask. Okay, and that's all the news. That's all our kind of fairly new products. I'm gonna answer a couple of questions that we've got. Uh, <clears throat> The first one is from Spud Rogers on Facebook. He says, is the Mako titanium dive knife as sharp as its stainless steel counterpart? Uh, well, a knife is as sharp as you make it. You can sharpen your dive knives. Uh, they're the same as your kitchen knives. You can sharpen them as much as you like. Um, one thing I would say is that titanium is a wonderful metal. It does hold an edge very, very well. It's much lighter than steel. And also you don't have to wash it as thoroughly um, as you do. When I first started diving, I, um, I bought um, just stainless steel dive knives. And if you leave it in a sheath after you've been diving in the ocean, if you leave it after just one dive, just, um, just away to one side, it starts to rust. Titanium doesn't rust. Uh, it doesn't have the iron content. So, um, so titanium, okay, it's more expensive, but in the long run, it's gonna cost you a lot less. Um, all of my knives are titanium. They're, um, it, it's a very, very nice metal to use. Uh, William Ball asks, Nitrox DIN fittings, larger than normal DIN fittings for so-called safety. So Nitrox gases don't get mixed with normal air. New EU regulation, have you heard of this? Uh, this has been around for quite a while. Um, in the UK, the standard DIN thread is M25, and we use that for air and Nitrox. In the EU, uh, so mainly in Germany, they, uh, they use M26 thread for nitrox. Um, and they're trying to, um, it's basically because higher oxygen contents react with the grease that we put in your regulators in your first stage to grease the O-rings and uh, higher oxygen reacts with um, certain materials inside. So they want to um, really err on the side of caution just to, um, uh, just so that you'd have a, a dedicated nitrox cylinder, dedicated nitrox first stage, and a dedicated nitrox second stage. In the UK, because we uh, we rarely go over the sort of forty percent nitrox, we um, uh, we tend to ignore that kind of rule, and we just stick with um, M25. Um, I've never had an issue with it diving in this country abroad. Um, but yeah, in some countries you might find an issue, especially if you're using Puro2. Uh, Puro2 in the UK, uh, especially with your, uh, your rebreathers, you will find that, um, that the, the valves will come with uh, M26 um, threads. 
So it is a thing. It's been around for a while, but in uh, in the UK, we just kind of we just stick to uh, to uh, to M25. <clears throat> uh, Gary Paddock asks, any ideas when the Eon Steel tank pods are back in? Um, they're uh, they're really popular. It's uh, it's still a fairly new product. Uh, I haven't spoken to Sinto specifically about them, but uh, but I'll find out for you. And um, they're normally pretty good. They get regular shipments, and um, because it's so popular, it's kind of a first come first serve. So uh, so we have our orders, our back orders with Sinto, and uh, and as soon as we get them, it'll uh, it'll come up on our website. What you can do in the meantime is whenever anything's out of stock on our website. Underneath the, um, the item is out of stock, we have a notify me button. So what you can do is if you click on that, enter your email address, as soon as Ben in the warehouse scans it, what it does is it sends you an email and says the Eon tank pods are back in stock, and that way you can purchase it. Uh, again, sorry, new products, uh, similar with the Apex, really, really popular products. You've got to get in there quick. Um, and the, uh, the Eon Steel is a really, really popular um, product. Uh, Klaz DG uh, has got a question. What is the main benefits of side mount diving compared to single cylinder on the back? So um, I moved on to side mount uh, a few years ago now, and um, it's much more versatile. Uh, it's much safer. It evolved from cave diving. And um, so you're diving on a single stage on your back, and you're swimming along, and something goes wrong with your first stage. It's all behind you. Um, you're also you've got a lot of weight on your back. If you've got a steel cylinder, that way your um, your trim is a lot higher. You're a lot more offset. Whereas with side mount, you have two cylinders. So imagine those as two sort of ballasts, and you have just the utmost amount of redundancy. You have two independent stages, so you can be breathing from one. Something goes wrong with this stage, you can swap over and start breathing from that one. Your first stage is right here on your side. You can see what's going on. You can shut down the cylinder if you need to, fix the issue, open it up again. It's also much more flexible. You can, um, the cylinders, they're not um, strapped onto you as, um, as permanently as it would be a twin set or a single stage. You have bolt snaps over your shoulder and down by your hip. So you can remove a stage. You can either donate the stage to someone if they've run out of air, if they have a, um, an emergency. Uh, a real benefit of this is that you don't have to lug two cylinders into the water from where you kit up. So what I do is I tend to I take one stage, carry it down into the water, put it in the water, go back to my kitting up stage up area, fit one cylinder, and then I can walk down get in the water, nice and positively buoyant, fit my second stage, and away I go diving. It's, um, if you suffer from back problems, it's much more comfortable. Uh, you're much more laterally compressed. So, uh, so if you're swimming through an overhead environment, you haven't got your first stage. If you're swimming along, your first stage is gonna be the first thing that hits onto, um, onto a rock or, um, or a piece of wreck, and um, I don't want my hoses around sort of sharp, pointy, horrible environments. Whereas if they're on side mount, they're down, they're nice and tucked in, you're really nice and streamlined. It's a really nice way of diving. You can control your trim as well based on where you, um, where you put the, the, um, each stage. Uh, I love it. If you haven't tried it, try it out. Um, have a look at side mount instructors and um, have a look at something like scuba, uh, scuba fest in Cornwall. Um, have a go. It's uh, it's a really nice way of diving. <clears throat> uh, Mac Marsh asks, uh, how can you get rid of the black algae mold that grows on silicon? Hopefully, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Anybody who's uh, who's taught in swimming pools or, uh, or has had a lot of um, scuba diving experience, you'll notice there's a lot of uh, black mold. This is why I have black silicon um, skirted masks because it doesn't show up so much. If you've got a framed mask. Have a look at the manufacturer's page because you might be able to disassemble the frame, pull it all apart, and um, put it in an ultrasonic cleaner. The, um, the real problem with that black mold is it's more of a preventative measure. It's best to wash your, um, your, uh, your mask out very thoroughly with fresh water 
and then leave it to dry thoroughly before you store it. Um, wet, humid environments, that black mold just digs into the silicon and, uh, and you will struggle hard to get it out. Um, so if it's already set in, unfortunately, there's not much you can do. Uh, there aren't any sort of antifungals that will, uh, that will penetrate it. Uh, the best thing is to, um, to prevent it before it happens. Okay, so now I'm going to have a look at, uh, or we're going to have a look at regulators. Uh, this came from a few people. They've, um, they've been asking questions. And um, when I used to teach, I always like to, um, to tell people really how the equipment works and, um, and the theory behind them. Because if you're going to use this equipment, you should really understand sort of how it works and how to look after it as well. So, <clears throat> so I, uh, I put together this quick little presentation, which is Open Circuit Regulator 101, how regulators work and how to care for them. Because this is life support equipment. A lot of people I talk to, they, um, they can be fairly dismissive of this. They don't seem to understand that regulators are the one really important piece of kit that's keeping you alive underwater. Uh, I speak with my boss a lot, and uh, and he uses a very good analogy. If he learned to skydive, he wouldn't skimp on his parachute. He'd uh, he'd buy the most expensive parachute, and he'd look after it, and uh, and do everything that the manufacturer wanted. A lot of people are quite dismissive of their uh, of their regulators. So uh, so hopefully this will answer some questions, and um, and then if it's uh, if we have decent feedback. I'll go into more depth about uh, different features of, uh, of regulators. So regulators, the anatomy of the regulator, it starts with the first stage, which is the big chunk of metal. Now, a lot of people tend to overlook this, and they only focus on the second stage, the bit that you breathe from. The first stage is doing all of the work, or most of the work, I should say. This is the, uh, this is the really important part that screws into the regulator, that uh, screws into the cylinder, sorry. And this is what regulates the pressure. The cylinders that you use, they hold about 232 bar of pressure, uh, or 300 bar, bars, uh, bar of pressure. And the regulator regulates that 200 bar down to about 9 or 10. And that's what's going on. Uh, and then between that, you have an interstage pressure. So that's that 9 to 10 bar. That goes to the second stage, which most regulators on the market are what we call a downstream regulator. I'm going to show you how these work on the inside in a little bit. Um, but these are designed so that if something goes wrong inside of it, it's going to go wrong in an open position. So they'll give you more air than not enough. You also have an alternate second stage or an octo. This is the bright orange version. You should all know about these. This is your um, this is your backup second stage to donate or to switch to if your primary goes wrong. And then you get your high pressure gauges, your SPG, or your and your uh, low pressure hoses. So when you buy a regulator, you buy the first and second stage. They're already assembled by the manufacturer. And then what you need to do is you need to choose your alternate or your octo, and that needs to match the brand. So if you're buying an atomic first and second stage, you need to buy an atomic uh, alternate air source. That's because of um, CE ratings. They've been tested. They've gone through all the EN250 and all those kind of standards. Atomic know that that first stage with that alternate second stage will work. And then you need to buy your uh, submersible pressure gauges. These don't have to match. You can use any brand. Um, so, uh, and that's how you would buy regulators. Your low pressure inflator hoses, they come when you buy your BCD or your dry suit. So, uh, so if you want a complete set, it's always worth buying your regulator and your BCD at the same time. <clears throat> When you assemble regulators, we, um, the reason why we offer the assembly and the testing service is that regulators need to be balanced when you assemble them. Now, this is nothing to do with um, whether the regulator is balanced or unbalanced. That's a separate matter. This is the matter of you have to balance the first stage to the second stage. Because they're downstream regulator, if the first stage if the interstage pressure is too high, 
You remember when I said it steps it down from 200 down to about 9 or 10? If that's too high, then your alternate or your any second stage, if that's not balanced to that 9 or 10 bar, it's either going to leak or it's not going to give you any air. So, um, so it needs to be done by a professional. Nine times out of 10, it will be fine, but sometimes they do need adjusting, and that's what we do. This is why we have a workbench upstairs, we have, um, we have interstage pressure gauges, and we have the tools and the knowledge of how to adjust regulators. So inside the first stage, this is, um, this is a fairly basic diaphragm first stage. Um, Scuba Pro were nice enough to give us this sort of cutout drawing. And how it works is the, so this is just your first stage. You attach this to the cylinder. This is an A-clamp version. When you open up the valve, what it does is, first of all, it filters the air. You have a quick filter, and that filters out any, um, any debris, any bits of dust or, uh, or moisture or final bits of moisture uh, that can be in your cylinder. It then reaches the, um, the section in the middle, and this is where it all happens, because you've got 200 bar of pressure bearing down on this poppet and this seat. And, uh, and there's a spring which is balanced to a certain amount of pressure. So when you first charge it, it's going to let a small amount of air, so it's going to let about 9 to 10 bar of pressure past that seat. And then when that reaches that 9 to 10 bar, it then closes the valve. And, um, and that's what that spring does. So if that's not screwed in tight enough, it's going to let more than uh, 10 bar in. If it's screwed in too much, it's only going to let the sort of the five to uh, to eight bar of pressure. There's uh, there's a lot more gubbins on the uh, on the right hand side. This is more to do with balancing with ambient pressure, which I'll talk about in another session. But how this works is when you draw breath past the poppet, that nine to ten bar is going to drop in pressure because you're breathing the air. The spring is going to give way, and that. Uh, 200 bar is going to refill that uh, that interstage chamber, and that's basically what's happening inside your regulator. It's very it's very complicated on the inside, especially on this diagram, but it's all to do with um, with balancing pressures, for, uh, forcing in one direction and the other direction. So um, first stage, you really need to look after this. On the other end of the hose. You have your second stage, and the second stage is a downstream regulator. So the 9 to 10 bar will come in through the hose, and it will be stopped by the poppet seat, which is met by an orifice, which seals, um, seals that pressure. And again, there's a spring that's pushing against that seal, holding it tight, and that, again, is balanced to about 9 or 10 bar. This is why it's so important to have your second stages balanced to your first stage. Because if that interstage pressure is too high, it's going to push that spring back and it's just going to start to free flow or bubble. Inside the second stage, you have this lever. The lever is, um, is pushed up and it's leaning against your, uh, your diaphragm, which is on the front of the regulator just underneath the purge button. How that works is whenever you inhale, you create a little vacuum inside the second stage that sucks in the diaphragm, which pushes down on the little lever, which pushes the spring back, opens up the, uh, the orifice, and lets air into the regulator. As soon as you stop inhaling, that um, negative pressure returns back to normal, the diaphragm pushes out, and the spring pushes the seal closed. So that's how second stages work. They're a downstream regulator. The exact same thing happens when you push on that purge button. You push the purge button down, the lever gets pushed down, opens up the seal. Now on the inside of the regulator, on the bottom normally, uh, on side exhaust, of course it's on the, uh, on the side, but you have an exhaust valve. And this is just a one-way mushroom valve. Now these tend to get clogged up with, uh, with salt or grit if you don't wash out your, uh, your regulator well enough. And this is just whenever you exhale through the regulator, the pressure is going to increase 
and it's just going to come out of the bottom and you normally have uh, exhaust uh, vents that try to push it away from your face. Now the next uh, important part is the venturi or pre-dive lever. Uh, if you ever heard of uh, Scuba Pro have their Viva, there's uh, venturi or pre-dive switches. What these do is they adjust the airflow. If you're in dive mode, it's, uh, it just sweeps the air and lets it flow straight into your mouth. But what this can do is create a, uh, a negative pressure or a tore on the inside of the second stage, sucks that, uh, that diaphragm in, and that's what causes a free flow. So, uh, so what the Venturi switch does, when you switch it to, uh, to pre-dive, it, um, it will redirect the airflow back towards the front of the second stage, back towards the diaphragm, push the diaphragm away, close the, uh, close the poppet, and seal the regulator. It just interrupts free flows very, very efficiently. So um, then that's the basic, very, very basic um, second stage. There's a lot more to them. Um, this is just a Scuba Pro 295 by the looks of it. Um, if we start moving into adjustable breathing and, um, and more features, I might go into those in a, uh, in a future session. It depends how, uh, what kind of feedback I get from this. Uh, if you're interested in knowing about that, let us know and, uh, and I'll put together more comprehensive um, slideshows. So looking after your regulator. First stage care is, uh, is very, very important. The real key is after every dive, even if it's in fresh water, you need to wash your, uh, your first stage in warm water. You can use warm soapy water. Uh, the real point of this is to get any salt crystals or, um, or any calcium deposits off of your first stage. Um, but what you do need to do is to plug that opening. A lot of people, they tend to use just the dust caps. The dust caps that come with the regulator, they are not watertight. You need to put your thumb over the opening, either the DIN opening or the A-clamp opening, and just submerge it quickly, give it a good swish around just to get all of the, uh, the salt water off. Because after they dry, the salt crystals are going to crystallize and they start to erode and it's, it's not good. You start getting verdigris, which is that green sort of chalky material on the first stage. And um, the real key is you don't want water inside your first stage. If water gets inside your first stage, it gets into your hoses, it starts to rot your hoses and, uh, and you can't see until it goes wrong. So always, always plug that opening, but not just with a dust cap. Dust caps stop dust. That's why they're called dust caps. You, uh, you need something a bit more watertight. And also service them by your, uh, your manufacturer's guidelines. Uh, it's normally done in years, like Scuba Pro has a two-year um, service schedule, or it's done by a number of dives. It's exactly the same as your car. It's either once a year or so over many thousand miles. Because you have dynamic O-rings inside your, um, your first stage and your second stage, that wear out over, over time, they need greasing, they need replacing, and the diaphragms as well, they start to corrode. Um, uh, the seals as well, those, uh, those poppets that I was talking about earlier, they start to bed in. They're pushed by a spring onto a sharp circle, and after a while, that does start to dig in. So um, we, we put out a question a little while ago asking, how often do you get your regulators um, service? And one guy wrote back, whenever they fail. Now, in my mind, that's the stupidest thing you could have said because this is life support equipment and it's going to fail when you're using it, which is normally going to be about 20 meters underwater. So I want to make sure it's serviced every year, it's in perfect working function, and uh, all the bits inside of it are up to date. Your second stage, this is your mouthpiece. You need to wash these out as well uh, and look on the inside, especially on your octo. When I uh, used to work for a service center, we, we had one and it had um, all sorts of crud. I forget what it was. I think there was a snail in one of them. You, um, if you're going to be donating that, you're not going to want that on the inside of your second stage. So keep them clean. Again, wash them in warm, fresh water. But whatever you do, don't press that purge button. If you press the purge button, you're going to retract that poppet and water is going to get in the hose. As I said earlier, water in your hose is going to rot and uh, again, it's a not a good thing. 
Same thing, have it serviced by your manufacturer's guidelines, either by time or number of dives. Um, I'd rather have my equipment serviced too much than not enough. Because again, it's life, it's, uh, life support equipment. I wanna make sure that it's working. Another thing is hose care. Hoses should be stored in as straight position as possible. I know the manufacturers, they, um, they give you your, uh, your regulator bags, which are really nice. They keep them safe when you're traveling, but they're always coiled up. Try and avoid coiling as much as possible. This is an old set of regulators uh, that we have on display in the shop. And, um, and this is to show off the, uh, the hose protectors. Now, I'm holding the second stage of this regulator in exactly the same position, but you can see how much the hose bends without that hose protector. And as much, it doesn't look like much stress, but there's a lot of stress on the top bend of that, um, of that hose. And that rubber, after time, it's gonna split and it's gonna wear away. So, uh, so hose protectors are a must, especially on the first stage. Whenever you store them, store them out of direct sunlight in a nice cool uh, sort of dark cupboards and try and keep the hoses as straight as possible. Hoses are best when they're straight and, um, and inspect them before every dive because they do go after a while. Um, they're, they're a really important part of the kit. Um, rubber hoses are starting to go out of fashion. It's more braided hoses now. They have higher burst pressures, they're much lighter and they're much, much more flexible. Okay, so <clears throat> that's it for regulators. Again, if you want me to, um, to talk more on regulators or any specific part of equipment, uh, how to look after it, things to look for, different features like the pros and cons of balanced regulators or overbalanced regulators, uh, put them down in the comments below and, um, and maybe in next month's show or um, somewhere down the line, I'll do a video on it. Okay, so we've got a couple minutes left. I'm gonna try and do a couple more uh, questions. Uh, let's go for <clears throat> uh, Dylan Rendell asks, uh, just wondering, what's your favorite ever dive you've been on? Um, oh, I've been on a few, Dylan. <laughs> um, my favorite was probably in Madagascar. Uh, this is where I was doing a lot of marine conservation work. And I was just diving with a friend, Finn. Uh, it was a rib dive, so we dived in off the back. And um, we were just practicing our, um, uh, our fish ID skills. Uh, and it was just so chilled out, relaxed, perfect buoyancy, perfect viz plenty of fish, um, just really, really chilled out. Um, I'm also a fan of night dives. Night dives, I think, are very, very personal because uh, all you're focused on is just your uh, just your spotlight. And um, But yeah, Madagascar is a beautiful country to go visit. Um, if you ever get a chance, go there. Uh, diving is beautiful. It's, um, it's nowhere near it's sort of Sharm El Sheikh. All the colors are still there in the, uh, in the reefs. All the fish are uh, indigenous just to that area. So you can see some amazing stuff. <clears throat> uh, Phil Grinus, I know Phil Grinus uh, on Facebook. Hey Mark, uh, what do I have to look out when I get a surface marker buoy? So, uh, so an SMB, a DSMB is the delayed surface marker buoy. Um, they tend to be in three different colors. Uh, the most common is orange. Orange in the UK means I'm about to surface, uh, I'm doing my safety stop, uh, and it just wards uh, boats away from that area. Yellow tends to mean, in the UK especially, it means there's an emergency. So avoid yellow unless you're doing sort of proper technical diving. And black is the newest color. Apparently black is a very, very um, prominent color in um, out in the waters. So, um, but. Personally, I'm gonna stick with orange because everyone knows orange. Uh, I tend to use a sealed buoy. You get open-ended and sealed buoys. Open-ended are fine. You can put your, uh, your second stage or use your exhaust just to fill up the buoy, send it up. But the problem is some of them, especially if they're not fluted, they go up. If you're not pulling down on that line, as soon as they flop over, all the air just rushes back out and then you'll just reel it back down to yourself. So I always use the sealed cell SMB. I use the Hollis um, Compact DSMB. All you do is you connect it to your low pressure inflator. You just pinch it, 
for about a second and it shoots off and no matter how much you tug on that it's uh, it's always going to um, stay inflated very very nice uh, have a look for uh, for closed cell dsmbs uh, but make sure it has a uh, an overpressure valve because otherwise as it's ascending all the air is going to be expanding you need an overpressure valve <clears throat> Uh, Spud Rogers says, thank you about the dive knife. Uh, is there any special way to sharpen titanium? Um, just the usual um, sort of, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I use a, uh, a, uh, a whetstone. I can't think of my words. Uh, yeah, I use a whetstone. Uh, make sure it's nice and wet beforehand, normally with, um, with fresh water or uh, if at, a, at a push, I tend to use spit. And, uh, and don't be too worried about it. Um, I tend to do it in a um, in a round um, pattern, but um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, there are lots of uh, videos on YouTube, uh, especially with uh, like straight brazers. Uh, they're very good, uh, so have a look at those. Titanium, yeah, great material. Uh, it's very very lightweight, corrosion resistant, and it holds an edge really well. Okay, guys, uh, I have loads of questions, but I've run out of time unfortunately. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to correlate all of your questions. I'm going to try and put them into a blog, which hopefully I'll uh, I'll write up next week, and uh, I'll try and publish on Thursday if I have time. If not, keep an eye out. What we'll do is we'll put it on social media, um, just linking it uh, with your with your names and your questions, and I'll answer each of your each of your questions. Uh, if anything's uh, really really interesting, I'll try and do a video with the video team. So um, as always, thank you guys for watching. Uh, safe diving out there. It's going to be a great diving season. Uh, the weather hopefully shall pick up a bit nicer. Um, safe diving, and uh, and I'll see you next month. Uh, the next Simply Scuba Live is going to be on the 28th of May. Uh, same time, same place. Uh, again, we will uh, we will post it on social media, so you've got nice and links. Uh, any questions you've got, put them on Twitter. We're always looking uh, all month rounds. And so we'll just save them up and we'll use them on, the, on next month's show. So next month, 8 p.m., Thursday, the 28th of May. <clears throat> I'll see you then. Safe diving.